Good day, it's Tony Fortune out from the technology firm. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about these ring buffer files that we talked about in another article with a twist. So uh, the previous article I explained how to take all these files and extract certain packets from all of them using one single command, which is pretty cool. Now what we're going to do is something different. We have all these files, these ring buffer files, because we wanted to capture for a long duration of time, and there's 27 of these things right now, but it doesn't matter how many they are. And what I want to do is find out which files has something specific. Here's the scenario. So good old Mary Jane sitting at her desk, she's having problems, and it's an intermittent problem. So you can't sit there forever hoping it's going to show up. So what do we do? We set up our Wireshark with the ring buffer so it can capture for a long period of time. And then on Mary's desktop, we set up a little tiny icon that says bookmark or problem or whatever we call it, doesn't matter. And then we tell Mary that every time she has a problem, go click on this thing. And what that's going to do is send a ping out of her computer. By doing that, now we can look for the pings and we know where the problems are and what files. So that way you don't have to search through all 27, 200, doesn't matter how many files there are. We'll find those files with a really simple command. So there we go. Here's my files. I'm going to go to the command prompt. The only thing you have to make sure is that Wireshark is in your path. Otherwise, this won't work. And I've covered this in the previous article, but just very briefly. So for, it's a Windows command, for percent a that means all the files in this directory obviously one at a time so when that first file we're going to apply this I'm gonna call it a mask a pattern mask anything star dot p cap ng which is our trace files we're gonna do something we wanna run a file we're going to do T shark we're gonna run T shark and that's why this needs to be in your path and what are we doing with T shark we're gonna just test this out right now so dash r means read the file what file? Well, percent %a is the file. And then dash y is your filter, in this case, icmp, because I pinged something. Because a lot of people will say to me, well, if you just ping something, it should be the only thing in the trace file. And I always say, no. You see, there's tons of icmp errors going on every day with every app. You just don't see it. So watch this. Everything works fine, by the way, okay? Watch going through all the files and it's bringing up all of the ICMPs. Some of them are pings, some of them are destination unreachable, port unreachable, whatever it is, there's always something going on in the background. So this is a little too generic. We don't want to filter on ICMP. What we want to filter on, we're going to change this, ip.addr, which is a Wireshark display filter syntax. And what I'm going to do is 5.4.3.2 because that's what we pinged right I just made up this IP knowing that it doesn't exist and now if I run that you'll see that it's going through these files and it found one here it found one here here so now I know exactly which files has those pings therefore those files will have the problems that she encountered so you're probably going to want to take that file uh, maybe even the one preceding it, but you'll you'll get the hang of it depending on where they are in the actual trace. Because here you can see it was packet 5046. So you might have a little bit before then to see what you got to see. Or you might have to go to the previous file. Nevertheless, now you know exactly which files has that ping, or we call them bookmarks. There you go. Have a good day. Bye for now.